First off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, the mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessors, uh, transmitting masters, lecturers, everyone here today for the opportunity to talk about the three inseparables of Tao cultivation. So <clears throat> this is, uh, well, I, I kind of, <laughs> you probably haven't heard that term before because I kind of made it up because I, I, I haven't found the term for it. But anyways, uh, let's see. All right. Okay, so uh, so as we know, I mean, we've been reincarnating for about 60,000 years. You know, that's what the Buddhas say. Uh, it, you know, within this cycle that we're in. Um, and, you know, <laughs> you know, who knows how many lifetimes uh, we've been you know, in this world, and not just as humans, you know, it's, it's all six paths of reincarnation. You know, it could be uh, the devas, right, the, in the celestial heavens, or it could be as humans, or as asuras, or hell, you know, being, being in the underworld, uh, being ghosts, or hungry ghosts, or, or as animals, right? And the animals, they have four births, right? Live, birth, egg, as egg, you know, birth, and then aquatic uh, water animals and also transformation are basically insects okay um, all right so uh you know so we've obviously we've accumulated a lot of ignorance uh you know say ignorance delusion uh bad habits tendencies uh so they're very ingrained and that, that, that's why they're they're very hard to correct or change uh it's very kind of difficult because <laughs> you know if, if we it's like a habit, like, you know, if you think about a habit in this, in this current life, uh, you know, sometimes the habits are hard to break. And so if you imagine the habit is over many lifetimes, then it's even harder to break. So, <clears throat> so these are the things that we're dealing with in our cultivation. We have to realize that, yeah, there are these things that uh, really don't belong to us. We've kind of picked these up in, in the world and we, we need to get rid of them. Okay, so the other major thing to realize is that we are here in, this is an impermanent world, this world of phenomena, you know, forms, this, uh, it's all impermanent, and, uh, you know, which is anicca, okay, so, and uh, there's, and there's nothing, there's no true essence or true self to it, to its existence, right, so that's anatta, right, we've talked about those in the past, um, so everything, and that's why Buddhas, they uh, describe or, yeah, they, they use the analogy that it's like our lives are like we're, we're in a dream. And we're living inside of a dream world. <clears throat> um, you know, the dream world, it could be a good dream, bad dream, whatever. But it's still, it doesn't last, okay? So, uh you know, one day, hopefully, we, we are supposed to wake up. Okay, so the Buddha, our enlightened person, enlightened being, has awoken from that dream. Right, so uh, most people are still living within the dream. Or, you know, like, I, I always uh, use the, the matrix as, as uh, it's the same thing, okay. Um, okay, so... But only the Tao and the self-nature, which is our true nature, the Buddha nature, uh, is constant and everlasting. Right? That, that's the true, that's the essence that always is and always will be. Uh, and so that is really, once, uh, once we understand and realize that, that's really what we're trying to uh, well, cultivate, that, that life, that eternal life, right? based on that, not, not, not on this physical life, which is very temporary. And subject to a lot of changes, so so you know why 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 do I show you this picture of this shaggy ox? Okay, so well, there's a saying, right? <clears throat> that uh, ancient well, okay, so uh, there are actually yeah, okay, you can say there are two sayings. All right, one saying refers to the ancient people, the ancient cultivators, right? That the ancient cultivators are as many as the hairs on an ox. Right? But those who are able to receive Tao and become enlightened are as few as the horns on the ox. Okay, so obviously this shaggy ox has 
you know, <laughs> countless numbers of hairs, uh, but it only has two horns. So, so obviously there are quite a few cult cultivators in the past, but not, but very few have the chance, have the opportunity to basically receive the Tao. And but because they are already cultivators, right? They're, they're cultivating. And if they are basically uh, qualified to receive the Tao, then they can basically attain the Tao, become enlightened, okay, basically. Uh, so, so, um, so very few, okay. So, but now we're in this white era, right? We say, this is, you know, let's uh, starting about 100 years ago, um, that if we have the universal uh, salvation. So anyone who has the affinity and willingness, et cetera, you know, meet the three uh, qualifications that we talked about before that Buddha says uh, to be ferried, <clears throat> they can receive the Tao. And so receiving the Tao, so that, that's just like those uh, cultivators in the past who very few could receive the Tao, okay? So they didn't have that opportunity, but today we do have the opportunity. Uh, the sad thing is, though, okay, so the saying today is that, yeah, today the number of uh, people who receive the Tao are like the numbers of hairs on the ox, but uh, the number who actually attain or, or you know, become enlightened uh, are only number as few as the, the horns of the ox, right? So... Uh, basically, you, know, you can say that. So it's it's very it's parallel to the other one. Okay, so uh, so basically, you know, we what it what it means is that yeah, we have a greater opportunity, greater chance to actually become enlightened. You know, to transcend this reincarnation, the cycle of uh, life, death, rebirth. Uh, <clears throat> but we, we still have to cultivate, see, because the thing is, right, in the past, they, they were already cultivators, and they are seeking the Tao. But today, we're not cultivators, you know, people seek, seeking the Tao, um, and, and so we, we still need to cultivate after receiving the Tao. And so that's, therein lies the problem, that people, either they don't, they just, they don't know what, you know, this receiving the Tao, this, this is all about, they think, oh, okay, I just received the Tao, get the three treasures, and then I can return to heaven, okay, transcend this cycle. Um, but, you know, there, there's, there's the, we, we still have to cultivate. <clears throat> and uh, so it's no different than the past, right? I mean, so it's, it's really, it's equal, it's fair. I mean, it's fair to, to people of all the times, basically, uh, that we still, still need to cultivate, just like they did in the past. Um, and to in order to finally achieve uh, enlightenment, okay. So, so the thing is that yeah, we've many people have uh, had this opportunity to receive the Tao, but they squander the opportunity by not cultivating, right? So, uh, so that that's kind of a shame. Uh, so, so it's kind of. You end up with a similar situation as before, is that the number of people who attain the Tao are very few. Okay. So, so, uh, so you know, part of the problem is, is basically, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, all right. So because of our ignorance, delusions, right, any kind of setback, uh, you know, a little failures or whatever, um, or criticism that we get causes us to have doubts um, about our cultivation. Okay, uh, you know, so a lot of, sometimes a lot of bad things happen to us, and we think, well, you know, if I'm, you know, or at least we think we're cultivating. Okay, so that that's there's one probably a misconception there, but um, you know, the, the, we, when we have, or even if we are cultivating, uh, if we are truly cultivating. And we encounter uh, situations where, you know, there's a big, uh, <laughs> some really nasty, bad thing happened to us. And we just kind of wondering, well, is this, uh, is my cultivation actually, is this, is this real? I mean, is this, am I really going to be able to uh, transcend life and death uh, if I continue to cultivate? You know, why, why does this thing happen? So, you know, partly it's, of course, it's not understanding karma and all that okay so 
So uh, there, there are various factors. <clears throat> But yeah, it, it can cause anyone really, even you know, long-time cultivators to backslide, to retreat, to regress a little bit, uh, and you know, basically we can't cultivate consistently, right? So sometimes, uh, you know, I mentioned before that we make some progress. You know, maybe we take two steps forward and then take one step back whenever there's a setback or something. Uh, it's just that ho hopefully <laughs> we 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 still make progress. It's two to one and not the other way around where we make one step forward and then two steps back. Okay. So then that's, that's no good. Um, okay. So, uh, this, there's this example kind of, uh, yeah, an example, I guess, of this Mr. Yi. Okay. So Mr. Yi, he meets Zhao Jing. Okay. The kitchen saint. Okay. So we've talked about Zhao Jing before. <coughs> um, but anyways, so Mr. Yi, he, he was kind of a, he was a person who's, inspired and motivated whenever he hears people say good things or kind kind words uh, and he's also greatly encouraged whenever he sees uh, people perform good deeds okay however mr Yi, he did not have good uh, deep roots uh, in basically well he didn't have you know strong faith and confidence okay and he kind of lacked consistency and persistence in uh, you know what he's doing so you know he's expecting oh that he, he he does some good deeds and then he's expecting some you know like rewards or blessings you know something good to happen as a result uh, but you know if, if it doesn't happen then you know he, he's yeah he kind of <laughs> loses his faith and confidence and uh, he kind of maybe doesn't really uh, uh, and you know so basically end up you know, any kind of good deed that he does is kind of just going through the motions and not really, it's not coming from his heart, okay? So, uh, so his heart of kind, kindness, you know, he can't maintain it for long, right? It's, uh, so it depends, again, on the situation, you know, if there's setbacks or whatever. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, although now Mr. Yi and his fellow cultivators, they established this, uh, this Wenchang society, okay? So it's kind of like this moral society, right? <clears throat> and... Uh, followed the precepts of Emperor Wenzang, uh, the, the kind words and deeds that he performed or said were kind of perfunctory, just basically superficial or is just going through the motions. Uh, and it's not from his true heart. Okay, so it wasn't really into it. Uh, or he, maybe he really didn't believe it or have that faith. Uh, because of this, you know, he didn't reap any good rewards or blessings. Right? So therefore, Zhao Jing, when he met Zhao Jing, but Zhao Jing told him, says, okay, so if you want to, you know, strengthen and deepen uh, your faith and confidence and be more consistent and persistent, then there, uh, there are two things that you have to do, okay? And those are basically <clears throat> that you have to be patient and persevere. Uh, okay, so, uh, you know, uh, and basically, you have to persist until the end. Uh, you know, continue doing it, doing, doing the good stuff uh, until the end, and, and do it with the heart. Okay, uh, and and also you cannot be lazy and try. You know, basically fooling yourself, deceiving yourself, or or other people even uh, uh, that you're actually you know oh really mean it when you do the good deeds or you say the good words. Uh, so, I mean, you might be able to deceive people. They think. They see you doing good deeds or you're uh, saying good words, but inside, you know, we're, we're deceiving ourselves, um, uh, really, uh, our conscience. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so basically, uh, Mr. Yu, uh, he took the advice of uh, the Zhao Jing, and so he had, he did want to change his old ways, okay, um, but he still had some distracting thoughts and, and doubts. Okay, so giving rise to laziness, um, you know, basically he didn't have the drive to really persist. Uh, so after a while, he started to kato, right, to the Buddhas every day and praying to always maintain the good, the, the heart of goodness and to exert a vigorous effort, right? So after piously and constantly reciting Buddha's name or title, okay, uh, you know, like Amitofo, right? Um, and yeah, he, he managed to clear his mind of distractions and delusions, right, and resolve to maintain the heart and mind of cultivation. Uh, so after a period of sincere effort, 
right? He, he, he was starting to make progress, <clears throat> right? So, uh, you know, and then, he, and, you know, he kind of gained more faith and confidence uh, in, you know, what he's doing. <clears throat> so no matter, you know, whether it's, you know, a word, some words that he's saying or in his actions or even in his thoughts, uh, Mr. Yi, he did, he didn't, did not dare to be reckless, right, and, and deceive the ghosts and deities who may be around him, okay, so, uh, so at that point, you know, it's just like what, uh, you know, some Confucius disciples saying, oh, that, uh, I think Zhen Zhi, you know, that <clears throat> basically they're, they're like walking on thin ice or walking at the edge of the cliff, you know, very careful, uh, cautious uh, in, in their words and actions and thoughts even. Okay, so, uh, so basically, uh, that's, you know, <clears throat> so basically, Mr. Yi, he finally succeeded because he increases faith and confidence by not, basically not leaving the temple, right? He, he's uh, cutting during the vows uh, uh, every day, and uh, also the teaching, basically, the advice, the guidance from the kitchen, uh, you know, Cao Jing, the kitchen saint, and also... Uh, the kitchen saying himself, okay, it's Al Jing. So, um, <clears throat> so those are basically the three that we're talking about. Okay, so, uh, well, not those specific ones, but, <clears throat> all right, so the, whoops. All right, uh, sorry, this is mouse. All right, uh, okay, so these are the three, what I call the three inseparables, okay, so that's, uh, <clears throat> I mean, if, there's a better name for it, uh, you know, by all means. <laughs> uh, but anyways, first is to never leave or be separated from the temple or the, and the, or the Tao field. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the temple is a little bit more specific. Um, we'll, we'll talk about what that is. Uh, the Tao field is kind of broader. You say it includes the temple. It includes basically wherever the Tao is, uh, you know, where the Tao is propagated and all that, so, or, or wherever Tao affairs are being conducted, you can say, um, or even broader, you can say that could include, you know, we, we sometimes we say Tao community, okay, so, <clears throat> uh, so, but anyways, that, that's one. Uh, the second one is, you know, never leave the, or be separate from the holy teachings or the scriptures, okay, so, obviously, these are the teachings by uh, to teachings by who? Well, you know, obviously Buddhas or, 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 or this third one. Okay, so uh, uh, you can say, um, or yeah, usually Buddhas, saints, sages, okay. Uh, whether they're left behind, you know, from ancient history or it could be current teachings, uh, holy teachings through channeling the Buddhas, channeling and things like that. Um, the third is to never leave, uh, well, yeah, in the Chinese, the Chen Chen is probably more closely, say, pre predecessors, predecessors. Uh, <clears throat> I use the word worthies instead because predecessors is a bit uh, uh, narrow and worthies is kind of uh, broader and actually more appropriate, uh, as we shall see, because when we talk about predecessors, actually in, in the previous class, I think we, we did say kind of what a uh, definition of a predecessor is. Uh, and for most people, it's they, it, it, it's very narrow, um, uh, has a very narrow uh, scope, but it's actually should be. So I, I use worthies. Uh, okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, the first one. So we we'll talk about the, the temple. Uh, never leave the temple. Okay. So the temple. Right, there's actually two, uh, you know, two aspects. One is the physical. The temples that we can see okay and and go to right uh the temple is a place to learn the dharma and practice and cultivate Tao. okay so it's basically defined by a place right there's a specific place and time you know time when you can go to the temple you know when there's activity or classes in the temple going on in the temple um <clears throat> uh so and there, you have different types of temples, right? You can have shrines, you know, religious temples, Tao temples, right? Shrines, shrines are typically smaller, and sometimes, you know, we, uh, the some people call like the family temple uh, a shrine, okay? The, the, but uh, so, but anyways, the, like a shrine, you can, you know, people typically and in Asia, like you have lots of like roadside shrines, actually. 
uh, where they pay respect to like the local deities, you know, the, the what is it, to Digong, I don't know, <laughs> it's like the earth, earth, God, uh, earth deity or something, or, you know, or that locale's deity, but uh, anyways, so you pay respects and worship uh, gods and deities, um, so this could be roadside, it could be home, you know, within the home, or it could be in the public, a public uh, shrine. Um, then you have like religious temples where again you're paying respects and worshiping saints and Buddhas, um, which could be for a specific Buddha, for example. Um, there are like you know Guaning shrine uh, temples, and then there's also like Guan uh, Guan Sindi Jing <laughs> temples, you know, whatever. It could be for a specific temple, or it could be like for the a more general uh, religion. Uh, where you can also hear the teachings in the Dharma, right? And also you can practice and, and there are, you know, all sorts of religious activities that take place there. Now in the Tao Temple, uh, we worship, you know, God, okay, God Almighty, okay? Uh, despite the fact that you may see statues of Buddhas or whoever um, uh, 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 on the altar, but we are worshiping God, okay? So uh, we respect the Buddhas, because they've achieved enlightenment, they've, uh, they've, you can say, kind of transcended from this cycle of, of karma and, and life and death. Uh, so obviously we have, we should learn, learn from them to, to, if we want to also achieve what they've achieved. Uh, we can hear, also hear the teachings and dharma here. Um, we can also practice, cultivate, and we can also ferry sentient beings. So people receive the Tao and... If they cultivate, then they can also transcend. Um, now, obviously, in, in religious temples, I mean, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll also say in religions, you know, that they're ferrying people. But, uh, you know, we, as far as we know, uh, <laughs> uh, only the Tao, you have to have the three treasures uh, that we can actually transcend life and death. Okay. Now, and, okay, so that, uh, that obviously is important for us uh, having this having temples but really what's more important is this formless temple or the so this this the first one you know the, the one that we typically talk about is the tangible one the one that form uh, but the other temple is a formless or intangible temple and that's the one inside okay so that's the one uh, so in the Vimalakirti Sutras you know it, it's saying that this temple it's basically when you're practicing the six paramitas, right? The six paramitas, you know, precepts, discipline, forbearance, uh, diligence, samadhi, or concentration, and prajna, wisdom. Okay, so, um, and then having this upright mind. The upright mind, you could say, is the pure mind, the, the, the righteous mind, uh, the straight mind. Okay, so uh, it is basically the mind of Tao, okay? Uh, and then uh, there's also liberation, being able to trans, you know, to transcend uh, the Bodhi mind, okay, uh, the four immeasurable minds, uh, you know, loving kindness, uh, compassion, happy joy or rejoicing with others, uh, and equanimity and relinquishment, okay, so, uh, and then also expedience and the three realms, okay, so these, <laughs> you know, so according to Vimla Kurti, these are all the temple, okay, so these are obviously not. The, some of these are like they're like pr either principles or concepts or whatever. But uh, uh, th so these are intangible and they are within our mind. Okay, so so this is uh, and of course they they would translate into actions or uh, yeah into in, in being manifested. Okay, um, but but this really what's more important is is these the internal ones uh, temple, right? So. Um, so as long as the Tao, the, the true Tao, okay, and the, the true Dharma, the true Dharma, understanding the true Dharma, and also the true principles are in our heart and mind, then the temple is with us everywhere, right? So we don't need to have a physical temple uh, to have, to be in the temple. <laughs> I mean, to be in the temple. I mean, we, you know, wherever we are, we are the temple, okay? So, uh, you know, so we, therefore, we can ferry sentient beings anywhere we are, anywhere we go and guide you know those who are lost and confused to the path of awakening all right so this is uh, that's more important it's uh, i mean even though you could say yeah all right so we need the physical temple that's where we conduct the 
the ceremony, right? Uh, for people to receive the Tao. Although we can, we can. That's why we can also establish uh, or um, basically have a provisional temple or, or, or a temporary temple. We just set up the altar, and then because the transmitting master has the mandate, they can go and basically uh, conduct or perform, you know, the ceremony anywhere. Okay, so. Uh, so this is this is something to keep in mind that the the formless uh, the intangible temple that's within each of us um, you know because it, it, it's useless if we go to this the actual physical temple but we don't have the temple within uh, then we're just again it's it's just uh, superficial okay so so then that's not real okay so that's something we have to keep in mind we always ultimately we have to get to the the formless internal temple. Okay, so, you know, what uh, temples, you know, they have, they serve a purpose. Okay, so we're, now we're talking again about the, the physical temple. Uh, it's a place, um, this, this is, uh, there is there's actually a list of ten things. Uh, I, I kind of combined some things, and so it's kind of reword a bit, uh, some of it. But, uh, you know, uh, it's a place to introduce heaven, the absolute heaven, right? Uh, that we talk about, that we can transcend this life into the ha absolute heaven and where we can save sentient beings, right? So it's a place to seek and receive the Tao. Uh, we can register our name in the book of life in heaven <coughs> and remove our name from the book of death in the underworld. As long as we truly cultivate, then we can avoid judgment in the underworld. <coughs> okay. Um, you know, so judgment in the underworld means that <laughs> we're in that six paths of incarnation. <clears throat> All right. And then we can also place, uh, it's a place to conduct the affairs of the three realms. So uh, the affairs of the three realms is <clears throat> basically universal salvation of the three realms, right? The, the human realm, the deva, celestial heaven realm, and also the spirit realm or underworld. Okay, so only in the Tao Temple can sentient beings receive the Tao and the souls can be saved, right? Or be able to transcend this uh, six paths of reincarnation. Okay, um, so that's, that's obviously a very important function. Um, uh, it's also a joyful place for Buddhas and saints. Right? The Tao Temple is where Buddhas and saints, they can channel into the human realm to inspire us to understand the principles, to awaken our wisdom, and where we can complete our achievement as cultivators, right? So uh, e even though, yeah, there, there are some other, like, rantan, um, rantan, I, I don't know what you call those, but there, there, there are other types of temples but, but they, <clears throat> where they also have some type of channeling, although, but that's not, uh, you know, they, they have that, like, a lot in Taiwan, but... Um, but it's not the same. It's not in the Tao. Okay, so um, so basically, those you know, in the, the, the teachings in those uh, types of channeling is they they just they just kind of they either uh, they, I mean they'll generally kind of teach people to be good you know to kind of change their bad ways and stuff like that. But it's not about like receiving the Tao and you know transcending. Okay, so that's only in the Tao temple. Uh, it's a relay, relay station for of the truth where we can learn and nurture you know, moral character. Okay, so the Tao is to cultivate according to the truth and the true principles so that we don't go astray or, or to bring us back onto the right path. Right? It is where the Buddhas and saints and lecturers and you know, worthies can teach the truth and at the same time, right, they can also learn to speak good, good and kind words and talk about the true principles. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, although, you know, we can obviously uh, talk, do, do the same thing kind of, you know, anywhere, really. Uh, just like right now, we're, we're doing the classes online, uh, so you don't have to be in a temple. But uh, so this is kind of uh, an extension of, of uh, the temple to, to wherever we want it to be. Okay, so... Um, all right, so, and then it's also like a filling station to replenish our merits, merits and virtues. Okay, so, so we have to have merit and virtue to complete our cultivation of, of the true Tao. Okay, so if we do not have sufficient achievement in merits and virtues, then we cannot return to 
uh, the absolute or the Dharmakaya to, be, to become one. Okay, <laughs> um, so participating in Tao affairs at the temple gives us opportunities to perform merits and fulfill our vows, or not just in. Well, okay, so again, the temple, you know, again, <clears throat> the definition could include, like I said, it could be not just in this one fixed spot uh, where the temple is, but again, like, if we're propagating Tao somewhere else, um, that's also where the temple is. And so if we're, we're participating in those, uh, the propagating the Tao, then that's, uh, you know, we we're, we're also have, there's merit there, okay, so we can accumulate merits. Um, but of course, in the, within the temple, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's work that can be done to uh, where we can um, basically accumulate some merits and also fulfill our vows. Uh, it's also a place where we can kind of clear up our sins, because uh, <clears throat> sentient beings, basically, you know, we've accumulated lots of sins, right, over the 60,000 years. Uh, we should return to the temple to repent and use the achievements of our merits and virtues to clear up the sins. So, yeah, we basically need the merits and virtues to clear up our sins, you know, pay back our karmic debts. Uh, so that's, that's something that we have to keep in mind, that we, you know, we can't just sit, sit around, uh, you know, just maybe, you know, we, we listen to class, but we don't do anything. Uh, we're not accumulating merits. Okay, so we have to actually... Uh, do things okay <laughs> we have to act right? <clears throat> and then it's uh, finally you know it's, it's a place to cultivate and refine ourselves to achieve enlightenment so right because we all have all sentient beings have the buddha nature that true nature um, but because sentient beings are lost they're confused and they're not aware of it and right? so i have to go to the temple to hear the dharma the true dharma um, and uh, basically with the subtle, you can say, subtle influence or encouragement by other, you know, members, uh, other Daokin in the temple, uh, and also through continuous practice, uh, performing merits and fulfilling the vows, and correcting bad habits and tendencies, right? Then, if we can do that, then, you know, we should have no problems achieving uh, enlightenment, okay? Uh, so, <clears throat> so, basically, in summary, you know, the the temple has many functions, right? It's where we can welcome sentient beings to the path of Tao cultivation and enlightenment. It's an indispensable uh, condition, basically, uh, for learning, cultivating, teaching, practicing, and performing merits and fulfilling vows, right? Um, okay, so among, you know, all the kind of the mundane things in the world, uh, whether it be, you know, wealth, fame, uh, or, you know, land or any property or anything, you know, the temple is probably, is, is more important than those things, okay, All right. Okay, so what are the benefits of uh, basically not leaving, never leaving the temple, okay, and <laughs> again, never leaving the temple doesn't mean, uh, you know, you go to the temple and then you stay there, <laughs> you know, uh, when the lights go out, yeah, it's time to go home, okay, so, uh, you know, it's not about physically staying in the temple, okay? Uh, <clears throat> all right, so uh, we, we always say that the temple is like a Dharma boat. The Dharma boat, right, it's, it's where you learn the Dharma and you, and you receive the true Dharma, the wordless Dharma. And, uh, and as a boat, it's because uh, we are being ferried, right, by the temple or, you know, <laughs> the, the temple is the ferry boat to get us to the shore of enlightenment. Okay. Now, um, so Nanhai Gufu or Guanying Buddha, right, says that the Tao field uh, is a place to cultivate the heart and mind, right? In this environment, we can learn the Tao, cultivate the Tao, and accumulate merits and virtues. Accumulating merit and virtue is achieved by wholehearted participation in Tao affairs. Okay, so Again, it's like what I was saying, we have to act and we have to participate in, you know, in these, uh, in these deeds, if you will. Okay, so um, it's not just sitting back and learning uh, or listening, right? <clears throat> um, right? We can uh, basically seek and receive the Tao, cultivate the Tao, correct our bad habits, get rid of our bad temper, purify our heart and mind, change our fate, and take the Tao path that transforms us from a common person to a saintly person. Okay, so yeah, I mean, this is the, the path of Tao is 
uncommon or un yeah you could say it's uncommon i mean that it's not it's not what most people do okay so most people would say that well you know it seems like it's either restrictive or it's uh you're giving up lots of stuff <laughs> you know whatever it is enjoyment or you know pleasure or whatever um uh yeah but that's that's how you know we have to be different to to in order to achieve the the goal the enlightenment okay so you know the the, the common view is not the view of enlightenment okay so if we want to get out of this this sort of rat race that we're in then we need to have that uncommon view and take the uncommon path now holy teacher says you know having having us return to the temple uh, often to learn the Tao principles is for us to cultivate the, the heart and mind, refine the nature, perform merits, fulfill vows. Okay, so if our true self is in charge all the time and we live up to our moral righteousness, then we will not be swept along by the trends of society, right? So, <clears throat> again, we, we shouldn't be influenced by oh, what society, what most people are doing, uh, you know, because th those are again, those <laughs> they're they're they, we we work from. The enlightened point of view, from the Buddhist point of view, those those people are all confused and lost. Okay, so so we shouldn't go along with them. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> our mind and temperament will naturally change when we stay close to the temple. Um, being immersed in this environment can help us break ignorance and egoism. Okay, that self-centeredness. Um, uh, <clears throat> okay, so once we can get rid of our ignorance and egoism, then we can purify the heart and mind, change our fate, and transition from impermanence to happiness. Okay, so again, you know, same uh, similar message here um, uh, between the two, uh, you know, of course, the, <laughs> the Buddhas uh, are all saying the same thing. Uh, yeah, don't follow the path that most people are taking. You know, we, in, in the temple is a place where you can, you can learn the things that uh, will help us to achieve enlightenment, okay? You can't learn that outside, all right? And definitely, you know, we cannot uh, achieve enlightenment if we follow the ways of uh, the, the people outside, okay? Okay, so now how should we view, how do we look at or treat the, the temple or the Tao field? Okay, so first, uh, say there are some improper views of the temple or how, how we treat the temple, okay, or, or our attitude towards the temple. I right, say, so yeah, some people who suffer from a big event in their life, okay, so, and they lose their will and courage to achieve their goal, okay, so basically this cultivation, okay. Uh, then they try to escape reality by taking refuge in the temple, right, treating the temple as a place to avoid hardships and disasters. It's like they're trying, ah, uh, you know, it's like, uh, the, <clears throat> they have a something really bad happened outside, and they they want to go to the temple to kind of uh, kind of get away from that. Um, it's kind of a, an escape, I guess, if you will. So that's not really that's really not the purpose. Okay, now we do say that the temple is a sanctuary where uh, we can uh, where we can be protected. You can say from like disasters, things like that. But uh, it's not where, oh, you know, I, I currently, I'm suffering, you know, I have a disaster uh, at home or, or any, wherever outside, and so I come to the temple to, to kind of get away from that. Uh, that's not really the purpose of the temple. Okay? And then realize, again, remember what the Buddhas are saying, we have to perform merits. We have to fulfill our vows. We have to uh, nurture our virtues. Uh, if we did those, then we could probably avoid those uh, disasters anyways. So, so, so we, we shouldn't be using it as an escape. Uh, the second one, you know, some people, they can't break through mentally, right? So they have some mental issues, obstacles, uh, and they try to use the power of the temple to gain respite or relief, uh, treating the temple as a kind of mental sanatorium, okay? So, so again, similar thing, uh, you know, where the first one is maybe, you know, kind of material, uh, issues uh, this one is kind of mental um, but the same idea uh, they're using the temple as an escape which uh, unfortunately it's not going to help them okay it's not going to help because uh, again if they're not cultivating they're not uh, performing merits you know nurturing their virtues 
getting rid of the bad habits, all that, everything that we talk about in cultivation, then it, doing this won't do anything. It won't do any good. All right. Some people cannot deal with a predicament. Right? Give up rather than try to resolve it and retreat to the temple, treating it as a nest of ease and comfort. Right. So rather than dealing with their issue, uh, they come to the temple. All right. So again, uh, same thing. This is not what the temple is about. Um, and, or now this last one is kind of a little bit different. Uh, so basically, the person comes to the temple and they don't they don't really listen or learn about the Tao principles. They don't put in an effort. They don't care about the Tao affairs and and the teachings. Um, but they act like a boss, right? giving orders in the, in the temple, right? So you know the, you know maybe this uh, this this maybe is more like you know maybe uh, where you know uh, lectures or maybe temple hosts you know. Um, they think uh, that that hey they 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 know better right and and it's like they're the boss and uh, whoever comes to the temple have to listen to them uh, but this will actually destroy the temple so this we cannot have a situation where this this happens because that then the temple is going to be it's basically it's gone okay so people are going to leave or whatever and it's it's not uh, it's not functioning properly okay so so these are the things that yeah we, you know realize that. If we do have problems in our lives, uh, we have to actually perform. I mean, yeah, the, 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 it's really, there's only, there's nothing else. I mean, other than performing merits, nurturing our virtues, giving our bad, bad, bad temper and bad habits. Uh, that's, that's it. That's, that's called vision. If we did those, if we had the faith and confidence to, to continue to, and persistence, just like we were talking about Mr. Yi earlier, you know, to do that, then we there can be changes. We can make changes in our fate, in our in our lives, uh, and we you know this is you know we we shouldn't we wouldn't be seeking uh, escape in the temple. Okay, so because that that like I said, uh, uh, it doesn't do any good unless if unless we cultivate. Okay, All right. So what is the proper view then of the temple? Uh, in the Tao field. Okay, so Holy Teacher says, where is the temple, right? Everybody has a temple in their self-nature. Again, so this is the internal, uh, intangible temple. Right? But because we live in the external world, we must learn in the external world, right? So it is very possible that we forget the inner temple, right? And cannot control ourselves. Uh, we must use the external temple to reflect on the Tao. Uh, that is why we must frequently return to the temple to study and assist in Tao affairs. Um, Right, there's also a saying in the Tao, we say, uh, right? we, we borrow the false images, the forms, to cultivate the true. Okay, so again, we rely on, you know, we live in this world, and so we rely on this, uh, these forms in this world. Uh, so just like the temple, the physical temple, um, to, and, uh, uh, to, to help us, uh, but realizing we have to... <laughs> We have to then realize that it's only temporary that we use these. Uh, these are like just stepping stones for us to get to the higher level. Okay, so um, but so that's what Holy Teacher is saying that, yeah, we, we still need to use this, at least in the beginning. Okay, we have to rely on these forms to get us going, get us in the right direction, um, to try to realize what this Tao is. Even the Tao has no form, we borrow the forms to try to get to that. Uh, to realization or, uh, you know, uh, um, enlightenment of what Tao is, okay, the formless Tao is, right, so, um, so yeah, so we do have to study, uh, you know, study and learn, and also to perform, you know, to, to practice, to, to assist in the Tao affairs, when we do that, also it helps us, okay, um, it's a different type of learning, it's, uh, um, you know, not, it's not learning through the the words, okay, but it's learning through actions, okay, and and ultimately, you know, that can also inspire our wisdom, maybe, uh, uh, and you know, obviously, we're we're accumulating, we're also accumulating merits. We can accumulate merits when we do that too. Of course, you know, the, the caveat is we do things. We're performing merits without attachment, <laughs> without attachment to merits, okay. So. Um, so don't even think about merits. Just just do it because it's the right thing to do, okay? Or it's a good thing to do. 
All right. Now, in the Vimalakirti Sutra, again, it says, you know, the upright mind is the temple and the pure land. All right. The pure mind leads to the pure Buddha land. Um, okay. So, uh, this is, yeah. So, so basically, you know, that upright mind, that righteous mind, that, that is basically the mind of the Tao. Okay. So, so that is where the true temple is. Right. So, no matter if there's no, you know, I don't live near a temple, uh, you know, there's no temple within hundreds of miles of me, then what am I to do? Well, uh, obviously, you can, you can establish a home temple, okay, that's a physical temple, but, uh, you know, the real temple is within our mind, really, okay, so if we have the mind of Tao, then we have the temple within us already, All right, so, um, now, let's see, um, yeah, so we, we basically we have to, you know, understand the principles. If we can really understand the principles, the true principles, then uh, we, also, we can transcend, right, or we have to also transcend the limits of the external, the, the temple that's tangible, right, and enter into the formless or intangible temple, right, and rely on the correct doctrine and true principles to establish the, that internal pure land, okay. Um, Right, because you know, this, this having this this physical form, this external form, is kind of uh, we have to be careful. Right, Six Patriarch says, right, if people in the East if they commit sins, you know, they can seek to be reborn in the West. Okay, so they they be reborn in a different place. Right, but if people in the West commit sins, then where can they be reborn? Okay, so so basically, you know, it's like it's uh, you can kind of. Uh, like move around different uh, places, but ultimately it's still the same. You have the same problem. Okay, so so we have to uh, uh, kind of get away from that. Right? There's also a saying that you know if the mind is true, then all is true. Everything is true. Right? If the mind is false, then everything is false. So so everything really depends on the mind. What's in the mind? Right. Uh, so that's internal as opposed to external. Right. So you definitely you don't need the external temple, uh, really, I mean, uh, maybe in the very beginning, if, if you know, we're at that, that, just at the very beginning level, the lowest level, uh, getting started, yeah, maybe we, we rely on the forms first to help us, but as we progress, we advance, uh, we should get away from the forms, you know, that's also one of the reasons why uh, Buddhas, uh, saints, they don't channel anymore or they they've uh, drastically reduced um the amount of channeling that's done is because it's becoming it's a form it is a form and people kind of become attached to the form uh okay so so you know we have to rely we have to kind of get away from that and and just stick to the the principles the true principles okay all right, so now the second one, uh, the second inseparable, okay, so never leave the holy teachings or scriptures, all right. So holy teachings are words of the saints and sages, Buddhas, uh, and such, a, such as, you know, sutras, uh, you know, so that's more like the Buddhist ones, sutras, and, or we sometimes say classics, or for like Lao Tzu's and, and Confucius teachings, uh, and other scriptures that benefit people. Right, so uh, the holy teachings, um, these are, that have a form, right, again, so the form, the ones with the form are the spoken, you know, the spoken word or language, a written language, right, but of course they can, again, they are like guides, uh, they can increase, help increase our wisdom, um, uh, just like uh, the, the, I guess you can, sometimes you see this picture of, uh, of the Buddha, pointing his finger at the full moon, okay? And so that's, uh, you know, so Buddha is pointing to the truth or pointing at the truth at the, or at the true Dharma. Um, <clears throat> um, but, you know, the people look at it and say, oh, that finger, because that, that's the, you know, the finger then represents this form of whether it's the language or the, you know, the words or whatever, the guide, uh, to get us to that truth, but it is not the truth, okay? That, the finger is not the moon, okay? So, 
uh, and and the words so the words are not the truth are not the the Tao okay so they just point us to the Tao they just point us to the truth and so we shouldn't get stuck uh, don't be attached to the specific words all right or the forms um, and then of course there's the holy teachings without the form okay so now this is you can say it's like the inspiring power of the spirit and virtues of the saints uh, that gives rise to wanting to learn from and to emulate them then also through our experience and observation to realize the compassionate actions of the saint to be of like mind and inspire one's own compassion okay so ultimately uh, we are inspired um, by um, their spirit of cultivation right the uh, what what they went through um, to uh, to basically <laughs> pass down these teachings uh, to us uh, to, to you know and also to achieve the goal of of transcending life and death. Okay, so uh, we you know there's much that we can learn from them and and yeah. So this being inspired, uh, you know, it's like every time I see uh, or I read about story of uh, some of these saints, Buddhas. Uh, and these other cultivators of the past, you know, it's very inspiring to me. And I, I hope that, you know, that's how, that's how it should be. It should be inspiring to us, okay? Um, if it's not inspiring us, then I don't know. There's something, <laughs> maybe there's something wrong. There's something missing, okay? So, so but it really, they really should inspire us. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it could mean that, you know, our heart and mind is in the wrong place, okay? That if it doesn't inspire us, right? So, uh um, so that's 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 the kind of the the teaching you can say without the words. Okay, so without those forms, it's kind of you feel it. It's uh, direct. Um, you, it, it touches us. Okay, directly. Okay, so what are the benefits of the teachings? Um, basically, Holy Teacher says the guidance and teachings of Buddhas, saints, sages uh, can inspire wisdom. Right, <clears throat> right. The more we read of the Holy Teachings, we can review the past and. Uh, and also learn uh, the new. I right? understand the marvelousness of the all-pervading one, right? Um, and realize the painstaking effort that the saints and sages put into their teachings. Uh, the ancient teachings tell us to emulate the saints and sages, follow the guidelines, make progress with our virtues, uh, but never idol worship, right? So they never talk about idol worship. Um, and, and, you know, whether it's any individual or a Buddha, um, right? We, if we do not spend time and effort to read the scriptures, we cannot appreciate the aspirations of the saints and sages. Right? When we encounter danger, uh, how can we be prepared to make a sudden difficult or life and death decision, right? So uh, the teachings, you know, the principles that we learn from them uh, and also... Uh, in, if you know, it, inspiring our wisdom, uh, these things will help us in those situations where we have to make a sudden choice, a sudden decision that could affect our lives or the lives of others. Uh, and you know, it could be a life and death thing, or, or you know, just not something less serious. But uh, we really have a grasp of those principles and uh you know i we always talk about internalizing them internalizing the principles and once those principles are internalized they're within us uh actually they're already in us okay so but we don't realize it yet but then so to realize it we have to have that wisdom okay that wisdom then allows us is the application okay so of those principles that allows us to apply those principles in just the right way in that situation um, to get us uh, out of that situation, okay? So, so that is very important. That's why, you know, understanding principles and then also having that wisdom is very important, right? Uh, okay, so, and then Nanai Buddha says, you know, why should we study the scriptures? Because the scriptures contain the answers that we need and can clear up our doubts, yeah. So it's really, they, they contain the answers, all the answers. Um, really, that we're looking for. Uh, it's just that, you know, we, we don't have, maybe we don't have the wisdom to realize it, okay? So we, when we read some scriptures, say, oh, you know, this, is, this doesn't seem to apply, have an application to, to my, what I'm dealing with. But 
it's because we don't we don't fully understand or we don't have that wisdom, right? Uh, so only when our doubts and uncertainties are cleared up uh, can we understand and break the vicious cycle of ignorance and confusion, confusion, uh, karma and suffering, right? So the you know so obviously you know listening, coming to class and listening, uh, learning. You know hopefully we're learning and studying, and so all the I hope that you know people who are listening to the classes uh, that you're not like it's not going in one year and going out the other. Then that's a waste of time. Uh, but to really learn it and uh, and to to keep it in mind, right? When you hear a good principle or something that that was really good, inspiring, whatever, uh, always keep it. You know, you can write it down or whatever. Keep it in mind, uh, and because one day it will be useful. Okay. Uh, okay. So, what is the proper view of the never leaving the holy teachings and scriptures? Okay, so holy teacher says, uh, live according to the teachings without right and wrong. All right, so it's talking about duality here. Uh, live, let teachings become our own wisdom and make the family harmonious and happy. Why is the family not harmonious and happy? Because each says their own thing. You know, everyone says their own thing, and it's not based on true principles. Right, so therefore we must use true principles. Right, scriptures and the mind dharma, uh, the three treasures to verify uh, in order to trans uh, transform the teachings into true wisdom. Okay, uh, and Ace also says, you know, holy teachings are is, okay. So this, yeah, it's good. Pretty, this is similar to the pointing to, to the moon. Okay, so you know, it's, it's like a telescope, it can prove the existence of the moon and stars, but it is still just a telescope and not the moon and stars. So what the teachings do is to let us strengthen our faith and confidence and solidify our path, right? So again, the teachings are not the truth in and of themselves. The teachings are just a form, okay? So, uh, but we use that, we have to transform that into something that's, that's true, okay? That is the truth. So, so basically, hopefully we can understand the teachings to understand the truth, all right? Um, but don't take those teachings as they are, the words, as the truth. That's not, uh, you know, it's, uh, so you can see that, unfortunately, part of the problem maybe in religion is that because there's something, you can say they're, they're, they're missing that essence and so, or missing the wisdom that they are treating the scripture as the truth. Okay, so uh, that's, then that becomes, well, anyways, that, that's not, that's not the truth, okay? Because uh, no matter, you know, uh, how we are learning the teachings, right, don't become stuck on or attached to the words, labels, and forms, right? Um, okay, because those are all expedient, right? All teachings are expedient, which is expedient is, it's basically, you can say it's swayan, okay? So it's basically, it's whatever is appropriate for the people to hear, uh, and it could be different for different people. And so, so it's not, you're not going to get the one, one answer, okay? Uh, and so therefore, it can change. It can be different. Uh, and therefore, you know, if, if you're stuck on the words, then you're going to say, well, there looks like there could be some inconsistencies here. And, uh, and so, so, so it's not that. So that's missing the point, really. That's missing the truth, right? Okay, so... Um, the more on proper views, all right, in the Diamond Sutra, it says, you know, one who sees me by form or seeks me in sound walks a deviant path, not seeing the Tathagata, right? So again, trying to seek that true self, the Tathagata, that true nature, um, through forms, right? Seeing it, hearing it, uh, it's not, those aren't it. So the Buddha is not out there. The, the, the Buddha is not the one that we see, Okay. It's the Buddha is inside, okay? It's, it's in tan it, it has no form, right? Um, <clears throat> the Sixth Patriarch, you know, he, uh, there's a chapter, um, I think it's chapter 7, where he's talking to his disciple, uh, Fada, okay? So, uh, because the disciple, uh, basically, he was, um, he was having trouble, you know, he's reciting the, the basically, the Lotus Sutra, um, but he doesn't understand it, okay? So, <clears throat> And he was asking Sixth Patriarch uh, to explain. Um, now, Sixth Patriarch says, well, the confused mind is turned by the Lotus Sutra, 
the awakened mind turns the Lotus Sutra. All right, we, uh, this is also could mean, you know, it's the, the, the Lotus Sutra here, you know, the Fa, Fa, Wa. It, it can also represent the Dharma wheel. Okay, so uh, the confused mind is, the, yeah, the mind who, the mind without wisdom, the mind who doesn't understand it, uh, what they're reciting, right, the sutras, because back then, you know, people recite the sutras, right, but they don't understand it. And so uh, that's what this is, first part is saying. The second one is once you truly awaken, you understand, you have that wisdom, you understand it, then that's the true turning of the Dharma wheel. That's the true, you know, you're understanding the Dharma, you're understanding the sutra, and you are putting it into practice, okay? Um, now, reciting the sutra for so long without understanding made you an enemy of its meaning, right? Uh, without thought is proper recitation. With thought is deviant recitation. Without a dualistic mind, one always rides the white bullock cart. Okay, so uh, basically, you know, it's not the form, right? The words and the sutras that matters, uh, and we must uh, not become attached to it. What matters is the mind. If our mind is non-dualistic, right, so no right and wrong, no good and evil, no existence, non-existence, uh, etc., right, then it is the awakened mind, right? Unfortunately, human mind uh, the, is basically, it's dualistic, <laughs> okay? I mean, that, at least that's how uh, we tend to be, okay? Very dualistic. We see, oh, yeah, it's black and white, it's right and wrong. Uh, we fall into that trap, that dualistic trap, okay? So... Uh, but the, the, the Tao mind, the mind of Tao is, is non-dualistic. So there is no, it doesn't see things as right and wrong. See, actually, right and wrong, these are just labels that we, we've put on things. Okay, so, um, and because we're making a judgment, right? Um, okay, so, and then, uh, so when we see a form and we treat it as if there is no form, okay? Uh, so the, the words will not become obstacles. Okay, then we will know that all holy teachings do not separate from the mind, right? Because they all depend on what's in our mind, what's our view, what's our perspective. Uh, and we just need to be in control of our mind, right? When all is said and done, then we can truly understand all principles. Okay, so again, these attachments, these, you can say, biases, these uh, preconceptions uh, that we may have about things, uh, these, we have to break through all that. Okay, to clear the mind, uh, empty the mind of these things, then, then it's non-dualistic. Okay, then, then you know the white bullet cart also you know refers to basically it's the, it's the highest uh, enlightenment. Okay, to re we can reach the highest level of enlightenment. Right. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So now we're on number three: the uh, never leave the worthies uh, or predecessors. Okay. So, um, who is uh, worthy or predecessor. Okay, so Holy Teacher says, we only think of a predecessors as those who received the Tao or took vows before us, right, or who are our introducers and guarantors and also the, you know, transmitting masters. Uh, we are basing this only on appearance, right? We are only looking at, oh, their age, uh, you know, when they received the Tao, they received it before us, or they took the vows before us, um, or those who brought us in, obviously they were in the Tao already, so so we, we kind of looking at that, it's kind of external, uh, the appearance, right? And then so, but those with enough, but what Holy Teacher is saying is that those who have enough virtue and high wisdom, right, are consistent in their words and deeds, okay, because that's also very important that, you know, it's, it's uh, we do what we say, right, <clears throat> uh, and then, or we do what we teach, uh, are sufficient to convince others, you know, to be a benchmark and to guide people, they are qualified to be worthies, okay? So uh, only such people are worthy of people's respect and of people wanting to follow them, okay? So that's why I use the word worthies. It's, you know, because they're worthy of our, of, of uh, us learning from them, okay? Um, and us respecting them, all right? So, um, so as long as uh, actually in, in, um, Basically, in the Holy Teacher also, uh, you know, he 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 uh, dis, uh, explained uh, the fifteen rules and regu uh, temple rules and regulations, right? When he's talking about the second one, Zun Qian Ti Ho, right? So that's basically 
You know, so long as uh, we can learn from somebody's actions or their words, their virtues, right? Regardless of whether they are from the past or the present, right? Whether they are even cultivating Tao or not, uh, having received a Tao early or late doesn't matter. Then they are our worthies. Okay, so so again, don't look at the appearance. It's really whether they have virtues, whether there's something we can learn from them. Um, and again, we should not have preconceived ideas about, oh, I can't learn something from uh, uh, like a baby or a child uh, because, you know, obviously I know more, but that's not true. OK, so uh, we can learn from anyone, actually, if we if we really understand. OK. <clears throat> OK, so, uh, you know, there's a story, um, Confucius. Uh, now, this story it may be an apocryphal story. It's it's not clear whether it's a true story, but uh, Confucius and this child called Shang Tuo. Okay, so um, basically, uh, okay, so this this child he's he's seven years old. Okay, so one day he and I think his brothers, <clears throat> two brothers, they're out in the middle of the road, and it's uh, there's I guess maybe the, it was wet, and so he built this mud castle right in in, in the middle of the road. And he's sitting in the middle middle of it, okay. And Confucius, he's he's coming by on this road with his some of his disciples. Uh, they, you know, he's riding in a carriage, and they stop. And so Confucius says to the boy, he says, "Well, shouldn't you, you know, shouldn't you move out of the way and let our carriage through?" Okay. Then this boy, uh, Shang Shang Tuo, okay. So he looks up at Confucius, and he says, "You know, I have heard it said that." People must know astronomy above, geography below, and human relationships in the middle. Right? Since ancient times, I have only heard of carriages going around a city, but never have I heard that a city had to be moved to let a carriage through. <laughs> okay, so very uh, wise guy. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So then Confucius thought, wow, the, you know, the, the boy, he gave a reasonable answer. Uh, he can't refute it, what he said. So he and his disciples then, okay, so they drove their carriage around his uh, sandcastle and, and the child. Uh, and at the same time, then Confucius said to the child, boy, okay, so uh, you are very little, yet you know a lot of principles. Uh, now, Shang Tuo, he didn't like being called little, okay, so, but he replied, he says, okay, I have heard that three days after birth, little fish can swim and freely, swim about freely, right? Rabbits can hop and run. And after three months, human babies can recognize their parents. So this is a natural instinct. You know, what does little or big have anything to do with it? <laughs> so again, pretty kind of, well, I don't know, you can say wise guy, or he's, he is wise, maybe, smart. Um, so hearing this response, Confucius, you know, he found the child kind of quite interesting, and he wanted to test him. Okay, so, okay, I, I, you know, uh, long story short, uh, you know, after... Uh, asking him kind of some questions, you know, like, eh, you can say kind of riddle type questions. Uh, and the boy, actually, he answered, gave good answers to all of them. Uh, and in Confucius, you know, he was impressed, and he's kept praising him as he gave the answers. Uh, you know, the boy, he was, you know, happy to hear those uh, Confucius praising him, and he felt proud. And then he turned around and uh, asked some questions of Confucius. And Confucius, you know, he replied, but he couldn't really give the, he didn't really give the right answers, okay? So, uh, uh, and, you know, the boy, you know, he kind of said, no, wrong, you know, your answers are wrong, okay? So, uh, but, you know, so finally, you know, Confucius, you know, uh, hearing the, the boy's rebuttal, um, he couldn't answer for a while, and he, he, he sighed. And he said to his disciples, says, wow, it's not easy, man. This kid's general knowledge is so rich, right? The young deserve to be treated with respect. Okay, so it seems I had better learn from him. Okay, so uh, basically from this story, you know, it's, it's basically seen how Confucius, he's, uh, he's always eager to learn, okay? And he doesn't look lightly upon the young even, right? He can be humble and ask questions without shame, right? So that's what distinguishes a saint from an ordinary person. Right, so so he even you know Confucius, who's who's I mean he's a saint, okay, <laughs> he's a he's a patriarch, and yet he would 
he's willing to learn from the child. I think there was also another, uh, uh, like a Huangdi, the the Yellow Emperor. I think he 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 actually seek sought out the. As I think it was also a seven-year-old master, actually. But but anyways, all right. So this is you know it's just saying that we can learn from anyone, right? And then same thing, you know, Sun Xu and Hui Neng. Okay, this is in the, the Platform Sutra, right? Sun Xu was the senior disciple of the fifth patriarch, and he's he was also the instructor, preceptor. Okay, so he was actually teaching classes in the temple, um, in the monastery. Now, whereas Hui Neng, you know, he showed up as a newcomer, and he wasn't even ordained as a monk, and yet. The fifth patriarch selected Hui Neng to be, you know, based on basically because of his wisdom, uh, and his, you know, he was very close to being enlightened uh, to be the sixth patriarch. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay, so basically, you know, don't use appearance, age, or seniority to judge a person's virtues and moral conduct. Right, so that has nothing to do with these other uh, characteristics. Um, or else, you know, we might miss an opportunity to learn from someone, right? Uh, so, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, what are the benefits of not leaving the worthies? Uh, okay, so what Confucius says, among three people, right, there must be at least one who can be my, math, my, teacher, my teacher, right? So, we basically, among, you know, a bunch of people, uh, or even just two other people, right, we can always find someone who... That we can learn something from. Okay, being a teacher, I mean, means that we can learn something from them. Okay, so, uh, and actually, it could be everyone, anyone, really. Um, you know, when in, holy teacher says, when interacting with someone, even if the person is bad, right, he can still serve as a reference to remind us not to be like him. Right? Yeah, I, I always say that too. It's like, you know, even you know, some people can serve as good examples or bad examples, right? But we, but they are all examples. Okay, so. Um, that we can learn from. Uh, one is that we learn to be like. Uh, the other one is to we learn to not to be like. Okay, so um, right. So with a good person, we must learn from and emulate the goodness. Only then can we progress. By right? cultivating Tao, relies on worthies to help each other so that we can gradually move forward. Right. Um, and so if we uh, if we can close be close to the worthies, right, and benefit from them, we can get rid of some doubts and tests, right? So, yeah, uh, you know, we have questions, doubts in our mind, then seek out the worthies to, to get them answered uh, as best, you know, as, as much as possible. Uh, again, this does not mean that we have to be close to them physically all the time, okay? So it's like you hang around them all the time. <laughs> um, you know, they, they might get sick of us, but... Uh, but no, it's just that, you know, uh, we, we make use of, you know, if we can approach them uh, whenever we need, we need to, can ask questions, etc. Okay, so, uh, so therefore, you know, we can also reduce the amount of time that we are fumbling about, right, ourselves, right, uh, uh, trying to figure things out. Um, and then when we encounter difficulties and bottlenecks, it will be easier to break through. Right. In this way, we can make continuous progress in Tao cultivation and to grow from the beginning to the end. Right. After all, life is not 100% smooth sailing, and it's also uh, impossible for Tao cultivation to be completely smooth and easy. Right. So with the support of worthies and encouragement from fellow cultivators, then the journey of cultivation can last a long time. Right. So we do uh, need others to support. You know, we, do, we also need some support sometimes from others. Uh, from the worthies uh, to help us, uh, especially when uh, things are difficult and we can't, you know, we have some obstacles, we can't seem to uh, get around, uh, you know, get, we need some guidance from them. All right. <clears throat> okay, so what's the proper view of the worthies? Uh, Holy Teacher says, whether a person cultivates well or not, Lao Tzu, right, Lao Tzu says, right, the good are teachers of the bad, the bad are resources of the good. So again, same thing, uh, basically, you know, we can learn some good things from the those who are good, but, uh, or, or, or in this case, he's saying, you know, basically those who are not as good, I guess you can say here, can learn from those who are, are better than them. Uh, and then also the bad or resources are good, meaning that, again, we can learn, uh, we can also learn things that, hey, you know, remind ourselves that, hey, these, uh, you know, the bad things, uh, we, we don't, we shouldn't do these things. Okay, so... Uh, now, so in this, uh, this 
part of the, the second of the 15 uh, temple rules and regulations here, follow the worthies and guide and support the novices, right, is to emulate the saints and sages, respect those with the Tao, learn from them, be humble, right, help sentient beings. Let all those who have affinity with us uh, to get the support and help that they deserve, right? And in actuality, to transcend the mundane, enter the saintly, and to jump out of reincarnation. Okay, so um, uh, basically, so no matter how low a person's social or economic status is, right, uh, there's always something that we can learn from them, right? Do not see them as being unremarkable, uh, that because they do not have a good background that we look down on them. Like people who are truly knowledgeable and eager to learn are able to learn from everyone and everything. Okay, so that's how we should, that's the attitude that we should have is to, that we can always learn from anyone, right? And, and, and sometimes, you know, the, the, the Buddhas and saints will tell us that we should always, our holy teacher says, you know, always look for the good in others. So, so you know, no matter who it is, we can try to find some good point about them that we can learn from. Right, so do not so do all of the above, right? So if we do all of these uh, things, then uh, it's the the true meaning of never leaving. That's the true meaning of you know never leaving the worthies, right? And it's also uh, to be one with the spirit of the worthies, right? Not to be with them physically all the time, right? So so basically also understanding uh, and realizing their spirit of cultivation and also trying to instill that spirit within us. As well. Okay. All right. So finally, conclusion. <clears throat> uh, so Tao cultivation is inseparable from the three things: the temple, the holy teachings, and the worthies. Okay. So uh, we rely on the support from the three inseparables to keep us steady on the path of cultivation. Right. So not you know not especially in the beginning. You know we need the support. Uh, you know, later on as we advance more, um, but we should still never leave um, these three, uh, even if we may not need the support as much. Um, well, I mean, we're, we're always going to need the support, basically. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of degree. Um, uh, and then, but the external three sep inseparables is only temporary, all right? So because if we have an attachment to forms, then we are subject to failure caused by people and matters and situations. Okay, so again, the point is that we have to move away from the forms. I mean, we use the forms initially, but then we have to let them go eventually uh, to move on, okay? Um, <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, therefore, we must elevate ourselves with the formless or intangible three inseparables for it to be everlasting, right? So despite, uh, let's see, yeah, this, so, you know, despite, you know, any turmoil in our lives, hardships, trials, right, we rely on the support of the external temple, the holy teachings and worthies to keep us steady and unwavering on our path until we reach the end, okay? But then, you know, again, as we understand more, realize more, we get to the internal uh, um three inseparables, okay? So the formless one, the, uh, basically, you can say is, you know, the Tao field of the upright heart and mind, uh, the mind, okay, so that's the Tao mind, right? The, the mind of righteousness, the mind of purity, uh, okay? Um, and also the temple of the self-nature. So we have to eventually s realize our self, our true self-nature, okay? The Buddha nature. Um, that is, you know, uh, the ultimate goal, uh, and and so obviously that is you know formless, and also the principles of the self nature. Um, okay, so because these these are the things that if once we have those principles, um, again the principles that we learn are actually principles that we already have within us. Okay, so we have to realize it, uh, and then so the true Tao cultivators must let go of all attachments to forms and duality to realize that self nature. Um, Okay, so uh, we, we should not seek um, the self-nature in the sights and sounds, right? Uh, so, you know, we have to self-reflect, right, to, to kind of rein in our mind, self-reflect, use the non-abiding mind to respond to all situations so as not to fall into, uh, not to fail due to, you know, any kind of situation or condition, okay, whether it's impoverishment, sickness, fame, wealth, or any kind of people matters, right? Uh, the 
again, the you know the Vimal Kirti Sutra, if you know you can remember, is it's talking about that that true temple, that internal temple. You know, it's it's about practicing the the six paramitas, right? The upright mind, uh, the liberation, bodhi minds, four immeasurable minds, expedience, the three realms. Okay, so. Uh, as long as the true Tao, true Dharma, and true principles are in our heart and mind, then the temple is with us everywhere. Okay, all, right. all Tao cultivators have gone through the same process and achieved ultimate enlightenment. I sp specifically, we've talked in more detail in the past classes about right, the seven Taoist masters, for example. Right? They were all able to uh, start with the tangible three inseparables and let go of attachments to forms and duality and elevate themselves to the formless or intangible three inseparables to realize their self-nature. Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, we've, you know, received the great Tao. We understand that where we come from, right, we come from the absolute heaven and we re should return to the absolute heaven. Uh, you know, the Dharma Datu or Dharma Kaya. Okay, and then we should be able to settle our mind to the task of cultivation, right? So this is kind of like the big task. I mean, everything else is kind of, you can say minor uh, in terms of our lives, mundane lives. Uh, so this is like the big uh, the goal. <clears throat> as long as we can obey and keep to the three inseparables, right? Take advantage of the concentrated energy of the Tao field and the temple, the compassionate guidance and support of predecessors and worthies and the guidance of uh, the holy teachings and scriptures uh, in the right direction, and also, uh, the, yeah, okay, and then so that that will, you know, then help us uh, to achieve our goal, right? So you know, again, obviously we, you know, may the Tao be with us, but also, you know, the the three inseparables uh, should always be with us. Okay, and obviously this we take the the ones with the forms and then transform to the the ultimately to the ones uh, that are inside of us. Okay, so all right, uh, uh, that's it. Uh, if I had said anything wrong or uh, not well, um, made any mistakes, I asked the Buddhas for forgiveness and I asked transmitting masters and lectures for their corrections. Thank you. Any questions? Um, yes, uh, lecture Dean uh, uh, you mentioned about the amount of principle as for one uh, can be our teacher, right? Yeah. Uh, that one, uh, the service meaning says that we can learn from somebody where they always have some good act, right? Right. Uh, but what happens if the, the three of them, they are very, very fat guys? So what are we going to learn from them? Well, yeah, yeah, we can learn from ourselves to follow our own uh, conscience too. Yeah, the deep meaning that the the teacher is of truth. Right. Ultimately, okay. it's the internal. That's the, the, that's the change that they do about. Okay. So when we do bad things, no matter who, right? Even the bad guy, when they do the bad thing, they know it's very shameful. Okay. Uh, that's the moment. Alternative will tell us that's our, our true uh, teacher. Uh, oh no, no, that's bad thing. Don't do that. Right. right. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. So our conscience yeah. always is always knows, <laughs> right? So yeah, that's so why we have a sense of shame. We have sense of guilt. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the true teacher, and that's the heaven want us to fear our true nature. So that's the way. Uh, across to you know it's it's near the the heaven when we do everything according to whatever teachers say our own to nature that connects to right yeah we're not good at something that for first and not necessarily uh heaven want us to learn so uh, i think the deep meaning is the third eye is our uh our teacher our true teacher yeah, thanks. I mean, the the right. I mean, the the we start with the external. There's the external, obviously, the external teachers, and then ultimately, we have to rely on the internal, which our conscience, you can say, which uh, you know, well, like I said, we well, internalize everything. Once we internalize the external uh, stuff, like I, I was saying, that the principles are already within us, right? It's all part of our true nature, and so uh, we have. Once we can get to that point, then 
we don't have to rely on anything external. Okay, so, uh, and that is the ultimate. Uh, that's what we were getting at. And so that's what all the, you know, the holy teacher and the, they're saying that we have to get to the internal, the formless one. Uh, that is the true, uh, you know, the, our true nature. And uh, we have to get to that level okay, to, to really become uh, uh, fully enlightened. Okay. 